Hey guys, this is Justin from the Survival Review, and today in our third part look at the Batman series, we'll be looking at Batman Forever, uh, the film where Tim Burton and Michael Keaton decide to drop out, and in, com in comes Joel Schumacher. He had a, he has a pretty different take on the series, so let's get to that. Batman Forever. Now, where do I start with this? The series has completely changed. Like, the only way it's in continuity with the first three, first two, is the fact that um, the actor who plays Alfred and the actor that plays um, Commissioner Gordon, they're still in it. Besides that, it doesn't even feel a thing like the Burton films, which to me kind of messes this up because it's supposed to be a sequel, but like it's kind of not ish. Okay, let's start with the plot. Batman is actually a main character this time, not a supporting character. That's good. And, um, do we have Two-Face, who's just trying to kill Batman. That's about as complex as he goes. Uh, and then we got Riddler, who makes this machine that, like, takes people's brain waves and puts them into his so it makes them smarter. So, he kind of works with the, um, he starts working with Two-Face and all that stuff. And then Batman kind of has to stop him. In the meantime, Robin gets introduced. And, and he has a new love interest. Surprise. Huh. But, and that's basically it. And there's some, like, revelations. These revelations with, like, Batman's backstory and stuff like that. Which does not get developed at all. But we'll get to that later. Now to the performances. Val Kilmer is Batman. He's no Michael Keaton. He, no. He's... I always felt that he was a little bit bland as the part. Like, he doesn't um, do much. Like, as we're watching it, he's actually not too bad. I kind of feel the most biggest problem is just the writing. All the stuff he has to say and do is just stupid. The writing is just bad. So I think that's what kind of makes his character not work. Because Batman's alright. It's Bruce Wayne's okay. Now, uh, Chris O'Donnell as Robin was actually pretty good, like, the way they did him as, like, a teenager and stuff like that, I thought it was pretty interesting, and his performance, besides a couple moments, was pretty good, it was solid, it worked. Um, Nicole Kidman as Dr. Chase Meridian, uh, okay, I guess, he has no relevance in the whole movie, she's hot, but, very hot, but that's about it, doesn't really do much. And now we get to the main problems. Tommy Lee Jones and Jim Carrey. The two villains of the movie. They're terrible. Now, we'll start off with Jim Carrey, because there's much more to say with Tommy Lee Jones. Jim Carrey's Riddler. It's just Ace Ventura. Or Lloyd Christmas. It's, it's, not, it's not anything different or original. It's the same exact thing that he does. And it's so over the top and overblown and whenever you're watching him you're just like dude calm it down it, it really does it kind of fits in this movie because everything is over the top to begin with but just in general it, it just, you don't like him and I think it was a wasted opportunity with him because the whole beginning where he's kind of like obsessive he's kind of obsessed with like on Bruce Wayne and everything they could have really played him off to be creepy kind of like like the cable guy the way he was in that movie make him off so I'm going to be kind of creepy-ish. Which is more interesting than him just being, oh, just acting crazy around Bruce Wayne when he sees him. That was just annoying, but... Like, I actually think Jim Carrey could have pulled it off. I think if he would actually had to perform and, like, had better stuff to do in the script, and, like, could actually make this character like a real, like, kind of character, you know, like, make it more... He could, he could. Ah, <sighs> now to Tommy Lee Jones. His two faces. Terrible. If you ever wondered what Two-Face would have been like in the 60's Batman show, just watch Batman Forever. He laughs every single scene. Oh my god. Like, there's a scene where he's like walking upstairs and going into an elevator. And he's seriously laughing the whole way. And they're just like, just stop. I, I was seriously going, stop. Stop laughing. Because he did it forever. 
They don't play with his um, with two faces like duality or like split personality. They don't play around with anything. He just happens to have the other side of his face cut, um, badly burned, and just likes to, likes to have things differently, like to, you know. And it's that's all. And like he, the one scene where he flips the coin, and he keeps flipping it because he wants to go to death. That doesn't make sense. It's stupid. Um, he only flips the coin like occasionally. Like I felt like um. Let's see. There was a scene where he was like thinking about keeping Riddler around, and like he just goes like, eh, "Whatever, sure," you know. And I think you think he should have like flipped his coin for that. He shouldn't have just been like, "Oh yeah, sure." He should have been like, "Well, let's let, let's let the coin decide and see." It just it doesn't play anything. He's a complete over the top annoyance, and yeah, the villains completely suffer in this. <laughs> The two villains are the worst in this movie. Now, the look of the film, it's very flashy and very colorful. Like, like we're not just, I'm not saying the movie's just a little bit brighter in tone from the Tim Burton movies. No, it's really physically brighter. At the whole climax, there's lights flashing everywhere. And it's, just, it, it, like, it's kind of cool, like, the way it's done. But you you think, oh, it's well done, but it's not Batman. It's not Batman. <laughs> so that's one of the things that doesn't work. Um, one thing that I'm surprised actually, like, worked was the Robin story. I've heard some people don't really like it, but it was the only story that was actually well done and well developed in this movie. Everything else was just, just like, uh, just put, everything felt like it was just put together for entertainment, you know? Like, oh, he, Joker, I mean, Two-Face, sorry, I mean Riddler, is creating this machine because he's the villain and he kind of has to. And... The whole Robin story actually, actually had kind of like deep kind of like meaning to it, and that I actually liked. Like that was good. Like it's weird how this movie makes everything about Batman silly, but then takes the silliest thing like Robin and makes it pretty serious. Makes it kind of work. Like I like how they changed the Robin suit, where it's still the red and like green, but it's like a darker tinted red and green, so it feels like right. It doesn't feel like too colorful and just. Stupid, I get it, it works. And it's like, um, Chris O'Donnell was pretty good as part. Not perfect, but like, pretty good. He worked. And, like, the scene, like, there's. Where the movie worked was in the scenes that were, like, subtle. I like, there, like, the good, there's a pretty good scene where Bruce Wayne is showing, um, Dick around, showing him around his, um, garage with all his, like, motorcycles and cars. That was good, because it was subtle. Joker wasn't. Oh my god, I keep saying Joker. Riddler wasn't screaming into the camera or like yelling extremely loud for no real reason. It was subtle. So that stuff worked. Like, when you watch those scenes, you get a feeling that this could have been a pretty good Batman movie, even with the over the top, like, set direction. You still feel like it could have been pretty good. Which is sad for what it turned out to be. One thing I don't like is the Batmobile. I don't know, I never liked the design. Ever since I was a little kid and I saw this movie, the other design I never liked it. So I was just, I don't know, it just it doesn't work for me. It doesn't look right. Um, the bits that they try to do on the backside, which I heard there's much more that was put into deleted scenes, so I'm cut out. Which I, I think I've seen some of them, they're pretty good. It does feel pretty random because, like, you got all this stuff going on with the um, Riddler, Two Face, Robin, and there's another back. And Bruce is just like, Oh, there's something weird going on in my past, like a memory I've been repressing. And it's not, there's no resolution to it. Really. And in the, um, in the Dewey scenes there, it kind of is. It's pretty cool. And his decision to not become Batman for like one, like for a few minutes is really just out of nowhere and kind of like forced. It doesn't feel developed at all. It's like, oh, we need a dramatic turning point. Okay, he won't become Batman. It just feels really cheap. Now, all this bashing aside, I do find the movie mildly enjoyable. In kind of a little bit of a nostalgic way, because I did watch these movies as a kid. But, I can have some moments. It's a good movie like I would watch again every few years. No way, like, I'd do months of that, and that would be years. Like, because if it's on TV, you can just sit down and watch it. You know, and it's alright. The, the good moments are good and really could have made a 
not too dark, but like a pretty like, dark, but not as dark as Tim Burton's like movie. And it could have been pretty well done, and if written right, um, Riddler and Two Face could have been really interesting villains. Even and with the actors, the actors were perfect for the part. Jim Carrey as Riddler would have been awesome. Two Face, um, Tommy Lee Jones as Two Face would have been amazing, and. It just gets boggled down as over the top light show and it just it doesn't work a whole lot, but I guess that has some interesting moments. So out of ten I'm gonna be generous on this one and give it a five out of ten. And yeah, that's all I can say about this movie, so tomorrow's a big one. The worst movie ever made. I'll see you then.